8, 2011, when the press videotaped her after she was interviewed by law enforcement. And you can take that into consideration what her appearance was, what her demeanor was, as far as the statement itself, as well as the information that you have about her having lithium and Coumadin levels. And consider everything that was said. When she tells them that she was in bed for the last eight weeks in her bed, and that she asked them, are my kids coming in later, twice. She tells them, I knew we were coming to suicide. And when they talk to her about shooting Calix, she says, I said I love you to her before she shot her. She tells him she wrote a suicide note because she's trying to explain what's happening. And she tells him it's written down. And she tells him, I've always wanted to kill myself. I've been thinking about doing this for a long time. She also talks about a conversation with a psychiatrist. And you remember me talking to Dr. Obregon. And she says, the psychiatrist told her, you better make it on the first try, shooting herself. <clears throat> he was talking about suicide because she kept talking about suicide. And he told her to get it on the first try. That is evidence of her psychotic thinking back on January 28, 2011, that her broken mind, her psychotic mind, thought that her psychiatrist that treats her told her, if you're going to kill yourself, you better make it on the first try. She doesn't want to go to jail because it's a done deal. This deal to kill herself, she just wants to finish it. That's why I did it. She's telling them her plan. That's why I did it, to take care of them, to take care of them because I don't want to do it myself. The kids will bust out. They'll be upset. And she talks about God. If you believe in God, he will send you at any time to heaven. This is her thoughts about the children and suicide and God all mixed together. She talks about Bo always being good. He's a good boy. So in one breath, she'll say he's mouthy. And in the other breath, she'll say he's good. And in one breath, she'll say Calix is mouthy. And in the other breath, she'll say, Calix is my soulmate. These are her racing thoughts. She says, I hated shooting him, but he's better. I loved him. And when they ask her about Parker, she says, Parker's great. She talks about trying to hug her kids and that being the reason why she has blood on her hands and on her robe. I told them, I'll see you again in heaven. She talks about Bo went first, Calix went second, I sure as hell I would like to go third. When they ask her about the condition of the kids, she says they're a mess. And then you start hearing this talk between whether she understands if the children are alive or dead. They ask, are the kids alive or dead? And she says, I don't know. And she goes, what do you think? And she tells him, I hope they're dead because that's her plan, her psychotic plan. She's apologizing for her behavior in the notebook. She's apologizing for embarrassing her family, for giving them DNA of a sick person. <coughs> she didn't want her kids to live with the knowledge that their mom committed suicide. I want them to be together. 
when you see the photographs, that match up to some of the things she said. I'm showing you State's Exhibit 42. So it's two parts of her triple threat. The pills and the bullets. Now the state talked a lot about the bullets in their uh, first part of their closing being hollow point bullets. Just remember the testimony of Gerald Tanso, where he said, she, I showed her some guns, she picked one out, and then I gave her bullets. She's not asking for hollow point bullets. She's told them that she's using the firearm for self-defense, and so they give her those bullets. You see the photographs of the home, in Tampa Palms, showing you State's Exhibit 50. This is a home that's stuck in time. A time when she was maybe doing a little bit better. The maid said that it's usually decorated in that way but it's never decorated for this long. That was unusual. And you hear the things that she did that were automatic for her, even in her psychosis. The chair that she used <clears throat> to roll Calyx to her bed, to put her to sleep, to make her comfortable, she puts that chair back where it belongs. That's her autopilot. And we know that this is not just the actions, as the state would have you believe, of somebody who's drinking and drugging. And you know how we know that? Because number one, Ms. Schoenecker repeatedly told the police and everybody else that she was not drinking or doing any drugs on that day leading up to the shootings, that she drinks and takes pills afterwards in an effort to overdose. This is 100% her broken, psychotic mind. And we know that because in State's Exhibit 73, you can see this car that is not usually parked in that spot is tightly fit in to that space. And we know how she drives when she's been drinking because she got into the accident, because the kids talk about her taking a left-hand turn or hitting, maybe hitting a mailbox. And she parks the car into that tight space because she needs two cars in there to do carbon monoxide according to what she says. She also, shoots Bo outside of the home, driving. She's not hiding it. She's out driving in public, firing a firearm in a car that people in the neighborhood know is her car. The thing that was not autopilot for her, and you can tell by her actions, is in State's Exhibit 76. After she shoots Bo and she's in the house, 
she takes his glasses off to kiss him and she wants to get him in her bed where he will lay comfortably and they can be together. But she can't get him out of the car because he's buckled in. That's not something that she does on a regular basis and she can't figure it out. <clears throat> The state would have you believe that Ms. Schenecker is planning the Saturday massacre for her husband that she's so angry at she wants him to find the children. And there's evidence that they have presented that is contrary to that. In Ms. Schenecker's journal, she writes, to her best friend, a note about her best friend, Lisa. Thursday, I will send Lisa a letter. She'll be able to get in the house through the master bedroom sliders. And what do we know about the scene? That the master bedroom sliders are open, that lead into the bedroom where her plan was to be with Bo in the bed, where her journal is, where the pills are, where the firearm is in her bedroom. She wanted her best friend to be there. If she wanted to wait for Parker Schenecker to find the children, that would have been easy enough if she's logical and rational. She would have just waited until right before he came back into the country and shot the children and herself. Or if these post-it notes are so fantastic and they're not going to have anyone be t detected, then she wouldn't have sent an email to her family that alerted them to call the police. Now you've heard also about the notes that were on the calendar. And there's indications on the calendar that Ms. Schenecker is doing these autopilot actions, writing on the calendar, checking emails, and she puts on there, Bo is in the van, on the way to practice, Calix is in her bed, tried to make her comfortable in the bed. And she talks about the parking space. Sorry about your parking space, had to leave it for Bo, my darling, precious child. That's how she talks about him. The other thing she does, as you've heard, is she goes into the living room, into the TV room, and she's on autopilot. These things that she does, that the maid tells you, these are the things that she does when she's at home. She's on the computer, she's reading, and she's sending emails, responding to emails from Parker. And we know that there are times that she believes that the children are alive and times that she believes that the children are dead. And I submit to you that when she sends this email to Parker Schenecker saying we're waiting on you and also forwarding information, she's looking up headline information or forwarding headline information about Calix and Bo. That's what she normally did checked on their grades.
You've heard from several of the doctors, and when you have the insanity instruction, there's no dispute that Ms. Schoeniker meets the first element. All of the doctors agree that she has a severe biological brain disorder, that she has a thought disorder and a mood disorder. And we know from her past that her moods, when her moods worsen, so do her thoughts. And they consider everything in the case, and I submit to you that you all consider everything, just like considering the entire journal and the entire interview, look at everything. She's not hiding what she did. She didn't tell the evaluators when the state doctors came to see her that the devil made me do it or an alien made me do it. And apparently that would be the only way that Dr. Stein would find somebody insane is if an alien or the devil made somebody do something. They all say She's in a severe depressed episode that is universal from all the doctors. So the issue is, is she sane or is she insane? And Dr. Stein told you she's in a deteriorated state under the influence of extreme mental or emotional disturbance at the time of the shootings. And Taylor told you that he was hired by the state 10 days after the shooting. Because you have a former soldier and a loving mother with 20 years of a mental health, biological disorder. And she shot her children and they know that insanity is an issue. 10 days out. And Dr. Taylor tells you that you can be insane and still intend to kill someone that she was in such a state back in December that she should have been hospitalized. If her thinking was rational and logical, she would have made different decisions. She would have emailed the carpool or waited until Parker came home, or in her journal, if this is motivated by anger and abandonment and frustration, this is her last shot at her husband. This is her last shot at him. Before I say my final farewell, this is my last shot at you, and read the journal. Instead, you have someone that is severely ill and is psychotic and has lost her way and doesn't understand the difference between right and wrong to the point where she is shooting her son that she loves out on an open road, even despite him seeing the gun. A healthy Julie Schenecker would have never shot her children. <clears throat> that would have snapped her out of it. There's a big difference between my client knowing that people would try to stop her and knowing at that time that it was wrong. 
Nobody understood her. She was isolated and alone in her mental illness. They wouldn't understand her plan. They would not understand. Just like her family didn't understand. And even though she gets handcuffed and taken to the police station, she's trying to explain to them and finish her plan. One minute she says, this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And the next minute she says, I hope they're dead. To law enforcement, to homicide detectives. Her plan was to save them. To be together in heaven, it's not about anger. She has a history of being a good mother and a person trying to get better until everything falls apart in the summer of 2010 leading up to the shootings. This is a biological disaster. Her brain is working against her. The experts are in between severely mentally ill and insane. When she is firing the shots, she's hoping it's gonna be the three of them. Just like the photo that she keeps in the front of her wallet. The three of them against the world together forever, healthy. A verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity is a reflection of her mental illness and her psychosis and her taking responsibility. When you look at all the evidence and you take everything into consideration, we're not asking you to find her not guilty. We're asking for you to find her not guilty by reason of insanity because Ms. Schoeniger did not understand what she was doing was right or wrong. She believed it was right. And we're going to ask you to find her not guilty by reason of insanity. Thank you. State. <coughs> approach briefly. Yes. Only a 10 minute break. As I send you out, I'll remind you we're still in the course of trial. You're reminded of my prior instructions. Step out for 10 minutes. All right.